Good afternoon. This is Vaughn in Nova Scotia. Uh, it's been several days since I posted something, so I figured I should get back on the horse. Um, I took an order this afternoon uh, for a planter that I designed to hang on the wall. Uh, so it has its own little uh, drip tray. Um, and um, I'm going to throw a bunch of them. I got quite a few balls of clay, squares of clay, right here. So I'm going to try throwing about 12. Uh, I always think if somebody wants something, it means somebody wants something, so somebody else might want something. I don't know. It's the way I've run my life, you know, making pottery for 45 years. Seems to be working out so far. Anyway, it's a very cloudy day to, in Nova Scotia, so, um, and uh, we're, we're just, uh, I've been gardening a lot, but let's do some pots. Okay, let's see if we can get this angled so you can see properly. I think you should get a decent enough view right there. All right. Turn the wheel on. That always helps, actually. All right. For the technical buffs, this is a Shimpo Whisper wheel. It's not whispering when it touches the splash pan, of course, but when it's my bucket of water that's making that noise. Um, it's whispering once I get that out of the way. All right, this is 519 from Pottery Supply House as far as the clay body is concerned. Um, so here we go, let's get it centered. This is about three and a half to four pounds of clay. So press really hard right at the wheel head and larger lumps of clay, it's a good idea to cone them up a little bit. As you saw that I don't bang my clay into balls, I always just cut it up and throw it right on the wheel. It's uh, over 40 odd years, it saved me a lot of elbow, elbow grease. So I don't wedge anything that's new clay, only recycled clay would get wedged a little bit. Or if I pull handles with a piece of clay, I'll wedge the clay then. So I've been gardening, that's why I haven't been posting much. And uh, so my garden's starting to look good. It's uh, May 30th, but we still can get a frost in Nova Scotia, so we have to be careful. Uh, uh, June 5th is the full moon, and all the old timers say, don't plant until the full moon in June. And uh, if you've got delicate things, brassicas, cabbage, cauliflower, all those things, they say wait three weeks after the full moon. So, uh, but anyway, I'm ahead with my corn. I got 60 years of corn planted. I got uh, 60 potatoes planted, and they're all coming up. And uh, radishes, uh, loads of onions. And there's something else, I got carrots. Yeah, I planted all the carrots already. And I've got loads of lettuce in my greenhouse, because I have a hothouse type greenhouse and um, so I basically put lots of lettuce in ages ago all right this is what ha I do here so I pull that one pull then there's a big thickness at the bottom I'm gonna leave that start a little bit higher up and start pulling the pot itself it's important to leave like a little extra lump at the bottom for when I make my dish Push in again, pull up. Yeah, this morning I sold one of my large murals to a couple from Halifax who have a house around the corner from us here. So one of those giant murals you've seen in my other videos. And we're still under COVID guidance, but we're allowed now to be open. And we just have to practice social distancing, washing hands, stay six feet apart, basically. Yeah. And we're supposed to wear masks if uh, we're, you know, it's unavoidable to get closer to people. 
but it's advisable to wear a mask all the time, really. Of course, there's no question at that point. You are, you, it's just an added layer of protection, I guess. There you go. So that's basically just like a regular planter. It's kind of finished on the inside. I will belly it a little bit, a bit more in a minute. But first, this lump of clay at the bottom is to stick my finger in right where the planter finishes. And as soon as it dries, because it will dry past, put some water in there. All right. So I've got an extra little wall here. Open it up a touch. If it drags on your fingers, you just get some lubrication. So this drip tray, you can make really big or really small. And I like to think people can put these in their houses on the wall and not have to worry about water running down their wall because the drip tray will catch it. <laughs> okay, I've given that some Let's get the little undercut there so I can cut through a little easier later on. This tool is getting really worn out. It's my favorite tool. Got that when I was about 20 years old. So open it up as much as you can so that it'll hold more water. So basically that would hold about a third of a cup, maybe half a cup all the way around. Just a third is my guess anyway. And then, now be careful you don't catch the rib into that outside wall. And I'm just opening up the inside a little bit wider. And then bring the metal rib all the way up. I can speed the wheel up. I went very slow at that point. and just belly it a little bit. So you got a nice flat shape at the top. So it's totally vertical. Doesn't curve in or go out. Now, when this hangs on the wall, the back has to be level with the splash pan, the little drip pan. Um, so that uh, it will sit flat on the wall. So either now or later on, I usually wait a little bit later on, but you can actually just do that. You can see in the picture until that is level with the splash pan. So the whole thing fits flush on the wall. It'll be a screw hole through there and basically it will hang on the wall. All right, I forgot to clean my rim up. Just sponge that little bit off, it's pretty clean. All right, so that's one. I'll show you one more. All right. It makes a nice kind of change for people because, and also they can save, let's have a drink of coffee. They can have their outdoor plants and then when the weather gets cold in October, um, they can just unscrew them from the wall and bring them indoors. And I've had plants that last all winter. Some of, them are, some of the others don't. And so it depends on how much light a plant needs. Let's go with one more. So I round off the bottom, just so it's got a curve, so it doesn't trap air. All righty, let's go for another. So as I was saying, I've been planting lots of vegetables around this area in Nova Scotia, and I'm sure this is happening in most places. Garden centers are booming because everybody's planting vegetable gardens 
Um, we all had a lot of time on our hands, of course, if we were staying home. But I think people realize there's going to be a second wave of this thing, maybe a third wave. And it could get tricky for vegetables in the winter. So, so a lot of people are planting vegetable gardens. Now, I usually plant just flowers every year. I've got a, really, a lot of really nice gardens around me. But I have actually put in a lot of vegetables this year. And I've got lots more to go. As soon as the weather gets a little warmer. It's about 18 degrees centigrade here today, which is about uh, mid 60s Fahrenheit. It's still got a wobble. Sometimes it just may have something to do with the bat, or it could have a little lump of harder clay inside. I don't think there's any air. This is usually really good for clay. Pottery Supply House supplies this clay, and it's really good. Up. Now this trick, just going from the outer edge to the inner edge, is a guarantee, like an insurance policy, that you can press the clay at the bottom so you don't get an S crack later on. So one pull just to get myself a sort of cylinder. So I can see what I've got on the outside. And then I start higher up by about one and a half centimeters or just over half an inch and start my normal pull. Always compress the rim right at the top. Never forget that rim because I've seen people when they begin to leave a really ragged rough looking brim. That's the first thing you see on a pot. Yeah, anyway, once again, leave that lump of clay, press, start your pull, higher up. And then compress the rim again. The wall underneath the rim is actually thinner than that little ball at the rim. All right, so now this will be the finishing pull for the wall. So I'll belly it a little bit. But I don't take it out too much because I've got to do that outer wall yet. So the wider the pot gets, the slower the wheel gets when you're centering it's nearly full speed if not full speed it goes slowly at the rim now take all the cleanup work do that now all the water gets pulled out of the inside and now I need that sponge with some water here. Push your finger right at the bottom of the wall down into that lump of clay. Dribble some water in it. And then start another pull. To create the little drip pan. And then Get some more water because the outside get a bit dry then. Keep it lubricated. I'm bellying out the little dish now. There we go. And now, being careful not to catch. I caught it already there as you saw it was wobbling a bit. But you can straighten anything with the metal rib. I was catching it with my knuckle as I was pushing the inner, the outer pan. It 
So it's a compromise. You want a dish that's going to catch a lot of water, but you want a pot that's going to hold a lot too, so you don't have to water it all the time. All right, now we've got to get the water out of the splash pan, the drip pan, I should say. Now it's going to make that belly out to get that sponge in there. So there we go. Got the water sucked up, pull the sponge out slow. Make sure that isn't going to collapse down too much, but that making it a bit bigger is just helpful anyway because it will catch more water. And then the last thing you have to do is look to see if that edge down there is level with this edge up here. And this one is just about perfect. But, you know, just to tell somebody, okay, this is where you're going to have your screw. I'll flatten it a little bit. So I'll put a screw hole in that myself, but it's nice if it has a little flat edge there so that's that was perfect all in one I don't didn't have to correct it so that's not too bad so that's how I make these splash pan these uh, plant pots that can go outside in the summer and you bring them indoors and screw them to a wall in the sun in the winter time so you can have your favorite plants basically indoors for the winter save a life of a plant all right so uh, this is I wipe my hand off I guess before I touch my little iPad here this is a great little iPad I've always had, I've had this a couple of years now it works really good alrighty so um, if you have any questions just put them down in the comments underneath and um, I'm getting long hair at the moment I, I need to get a haircut but uh, I guess I'll let it go for a little bit more anyway uh, enjoy spring plant lots of vegetables all right talk soon bye